on this computer. Oh, gee, that was quick. All right, cool. So I think we're recording. I think this works. Uh, welcome. Oh, I dropped my cable. Uh, welcome, everybody, to another... Uh, is this an intro series? I guess it is. Um, today, we will be soldering. So this is <clears throat> kind of the session zero, almost, of our makerspace um, kind of like series that we're doing. Um, anybody that... Um, applied and like you know paid the tenor and everything got one of these sent out uh makerspace kit we haven't done these before so um we kind of were going off just off the noggin for a lot of the makerspace kits um i haven't actually done any of the projects that i have in the kit but there's no reason why they shouldn't work um the kits are also just have a bunch of like really handy like electronic components in here like there's an lm358 gain amp there's a couple of potentiometers. There's an 18650 cell and a case for the 18650. So if you ever want to do anything, uh, and then the, the two ICs to charge the 18650 and gain charge from the 18650. So if you ever want to power like any other kind of project, like a, like a drone or an RC car, you can use this cell. Um, the push buttons are just handy. The piezo is handy. But the main thing is the 18650, the battery cap, the ICs, because I guess... I'm pretty sure if you were to go buy just the ICs, 18650 and the cap would cost like 20 quid, but we did the whole kit for a tenner. Oh, and a speaker. Um, an eight ohm speaker because it's really tiny. Okay. Um, so the um, for anyone that hasn't soldered before, first year engineers should norm normally they do solder in first year, uh, as a part of um project and tech drawing, uh, with Hussam. Uh, I didn't solder in first year. I'm actually not all that good at soldering, I have really shaky hands. So um, I, I gave it to the guy that builds like RC cars. So he soldered and he was really, really good at it. So um, I guess without further ado, uh, we'll go through some soldering stuff. So I'll just tilt my camera a little bit. It's easier that way. That's my soldering iron. So this one is like fancy in the way that it's got a variable temperature thing. I just can keep it around two and a half. You don't really need to be going up any higher than that. It's got a switch. It's got a cradle to hold it. Uh, I definitely didn't melt the top off the cradler uh, when I was soldering last week. And then there's a little space for the sponge. Um, this was a tenner. If you don't have a soldering iron, try and get one uh, because they're just pretty handy to have just around the house. Like we were doing uh, a project there last summer with a bunch of old speakers that we found. And we were like putting speakers out in our back garden and we ended up needing a soldering iron. So like, oh, I have one of them. I went out, soldered one or two leads and was good to go. Um, a lot of the job that you can, a lot of the jobs you can uh, achieve with a soldering iron, you can achieve with electrical tape and hope. But having a soldering iron is definitely handy to uh, make sure that your contacts are safe, secure, and also in. Speaking of safe and secure contacts, we'll be using. Uh, oh, Michael, we'll be using these. These. So uh, this is heat shrink tubing. So what this does is this is two to one heat shrink tubing. So you put this over the lead like so. So I'll actually I'll do it with the ground lead I have here. So you just do it like this. You push it up to where the actual connection is and you just run a heat source over this and it shrinks and it keeps that shrink. So it keeps your connections from getting like tampered with, from being knocked or chipped or anything like that. So um, I'll be doing, I might only solder one. We'll see what, we'll see what the story is. So I'll just solder the speaker for now. Um, so I guess to start, um, this is solder. So all of your kits would have come with solder. This is my own. Um, the solder that you have is flux core solder. So sometimes when you're soldering with older stuff, you'll need to like apply flux to stop it from like sticking to itself. But you shouldn't need that if you're using the one that came in the kit. It feels a little bit thicker if flux core sometimes. Um, so just be careful when you're so, so actually, yeah. First thing, that soldering iron is like 220 degrees right now. So be very, very careful because it will burn you. It, I burnt myself when I was soldering last week, soldering some of the kits. Shit hurts. So um, don't burn yourself. Um, the other thing that got me when I was soldering is like, of course, I'm not going to burn myself from soldering for years. Heat travels up the solder. So if you're holding it like this and you're soldering on the end, the heat will go up in the middle and will like start to get hot and then you'll drop it and then you'll mess up your solder and you'll drop the iron and start a house fire and no one wants that. So um, stay safe. Make sure that you don't burn yourself of the solder or anything. And uh, the other thing that I would advise getting in room, give me one second. You know, sec. Cue lift music. We we still have to get that. We haven't actually. Hold on. Could we? 
Could we do that? Well, we haven't that? sorted out the whole music yet. We really need to sort we that may, out. Actually, because he, I don't know how many times he leaves, but we really do need to. Uh, he, so ma- he, he leaves so much. <laughs> I'll get Production quality. I'll get I to think, speak I think I might now. have figured out a way, though, to have hold music. Because, like, you can have multiple people sharing. So I can share just ah. my audio and he can share, like, his video and audio. And then it's like, you know, when he leaves, I'll just turn I, on. I, I think he's back, though. So I'll, 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 okay, say no. back. All right. So I, uh, this is missing a part. Uh, this is a jeweler's clump. So I think this is my nanny's actually. But what it is, is that if this wasn't broken, it would have two of these sets of crocodile clips and you can just like slide these along the central pivot, just like that. And you can, actually, let me see if I can get this in, in shot. So it would have two, another one here and you would hold whatever you're soldering on the two of them. And you can make the connection in the middle and solder them together if you're trying to solder two leads. Um, I'd recommend trying to pick one of these up. It won't really work for what we're doing now because we're not soldering two leads. We're soldering ICs. But um, I think you can get these for like a tenner on Amazon. Uh, they're well worth it because, again, it stops you. Like the, the heat will also go up the cable you're soldering. So I'm holding this and I'm soldering the end of this. So we'll go boop, the whole way up and we'll scald your hand. So uh, things to pick up for soldering. A soldering iron. Uh, heat shrink tubing. Uh, a doodler's clamp, something like this, and that's it, really. After that, you're ready to go. Uh, oh, desolder. The uh, like a desoldering pump. I have one. I never use it. Um, I, I hate them. Yeah, they're like desoldering pumps. Like they're kind of gaudy. Like they're really hard to hold when you're desoldering something. You kind of just desolder and just pull it. Like if if you're working on like official like stuff, it's good to use a desoldering pump. But like if you're just doing hobby electronics like this, you just like wait for it to melt and just refill out. Um, that's not good advice. Get a desoldering pump. They're just kind of annoying. Uh, they are fun though. It goes bing, and this thing goes back up. Uh, Except when you rip out the connection. Yeah, I've then, done that so many times. Yeah, the whole thing, like all this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, anyway, sorry, I keep interrupting. No, no, you can't. I punched my soldering iron. Uh, so, um, the first thing with solder is the speaker. So, it's hard to see in the light here, but this speaker here. In one of the sides has Jake, negative. So what, what parts overall do we need to take out from the kit? Because I've looked uh, a little bit. Which ones do we take out? Right now, it's these three. The speaker, the uh, charging IC, and the other charging IC. So what this, what these two will be used in is the first makerspace we're going to do, which is connecting the ends of this to the uh, 18650 and the end of this to the 18650. And it basically lets us apply charge to the battery using this end or using a USB cable over five volts and then whoop, and then pull charge from the 18650 using this end. So a rudimentary power bank. Um, our first, my first design had solar panels in it as well. So you'd be able to solar charge it. Um, then our supplier for the solar panels disappeared off the face of the earth. And it was going to be like another 20 quid per kit for the solar for the solar panel. So it just wasn't worth it. Um, but for this, this IC, this IC, and the speaker. Um, so let me move in a little bit. Um, on the speaker, it's hard to see now, but one of these terminals is negative and the other one is positive. Um, my camera's flipped. So just make sure that you're looking at the right ones when you're soldering. So one of these is negative. The other one's positive. Um, I only had enough like... Uh, cable for yellow to give everyone yellow cable um but if you're a first year or you've done first year you should have your first year electronics kits so don't yellow is the best yeah well you, first of all yellow sucks second of all um if no, you have red and black wire you use red and black wire um that way you know which one's positive which one's negative now if you don't have it now that's fine but like if you use the yellow for the minute you can always just like hold the soldering iron to the connection then replace it like swap them out uh, it's a cool thing about solder I'll be using this red and black, the red and black cable I have here now. So I only did this last week, so that's helpful. Don't forget. So if I hold this up, you'll see there's a little like circular tab here on the end. If you feed the cable through that little circular tab, Nikki, give me a sec. Oh, give me a sec. So yeah, it's uh, one of the, I was testing it out and I didn't notice that the circular tab was a thing, but it definitely does make it easier to get your cable in. Grand. So just like that. So you have the cable coming up through the circular tab and hanging off like that. Now you can put it down on the table and uh, time for the spooky part. Ooh, solder. So 
Stick a solder in iron. Uh, you can tell about that by sticking it to the sponge and if it yells at you, it's hot enough. To... So what we're going to do is, is that we're just going to hold the soldering iron to the terminal with the cable on it for a bit and then just put the solder next to where the soldering iron tip is, just like that, and then pull away, just like that. So, and then you have to wait for it, for it to cool a little bit. And uh, if you look at it, see the cable there is soldered on. So now if I, uh, if you're not using a soldering iron, put it back in its little holder thing. If you pull on that, it's not going anywhere. So don't pull too hard. But if you pull on it like that, that's staying there. So that's handy. The little circular tabs on these speakers are handy to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere when it's done. Um, other thing now is just to cut that off. So if you see there's a bit of excess cable here, we're just going to take, I have this little uh, wire snips. I think this actually came in the kit that you got, man. Um, this little blue pliers. It's handy to have a wire snips around as well, just for cutting things. So you just go flush to your solder joint and just snip. Take it. Now it should look like that. Um, now I don't think you need heat shrink on that because it's too thin. So you won't you won't use heat shrink on this one because uh, it's also just like too close. Uh, now we'll do the same, but with a red cable. So again, if you're using yellow cable, that's fine. You can swap them out. Uh, I'll be available. Uh, on the Discord, if you need a hand to like, I'm going to swap them out and anything like that. I'm going to do four questions. Yeah. Yeah. Might be the argument. Technical difficulties. Let me in. Bit finicky, um, but definitely try and get it in at least. Yell. Ah, there we go. Got it. So I need to like bend it up and then go underneath it. So it should look like that. So we put that down. Bend it over a little bit so it doesn't go anywhere. Unsheathe our soldering iron. Heat up the connection. The solder. And pull away. Yeah, yeah. So now we have a oh, we have a connection there. So now we just take our little wire snips. Get the connection, cut that off. Grand. So that's the speaker ready to go. So um, the way we can test that. Is um, I'm gonna go grab my multimeter. Give me one minute. Eva, we need to lift music. I'm gonna be full music. I just speak. Hold on, hold on. We need to some music. We need lift music. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Um. <laughs> Multimeter, turn her on. The one that looks like Wi-Fi or looks like a diode. The continuity check. So what this setting does is that it yells at you if it's got electrical continuity. So if I put this on one end of this cable, there we go. So it's yelling at me. So it knows that current is going through here, through here, through this thing. And then through here, the other end. So just like there we go. Yeah. So it wasn't hot, I just stabbed myself. Speaker done. Put it off to the side. Uh the speaker's magnetic, so don't put it near like any I don't know, exposed hard drives. I only say that because I have an exposed hard drive like over there in my Steam library on it. Um so now I'll do yes, because this one can be a bit confusing. So this is our micro USB charge IC. So if you see here, it says in, oh, in plus, in minus, bat plus, bat minus. Um, I, I believe, I'm gonna double check, but I believe that we need to be soldering to the battery terminals, not the input terminals, because we're not 
Yeah, yeah, to the battery terminals because we're not inputting power. So in our power bank, we're not inputting power to this. We're taking power from this side. So the power will be coming in through this uh, USB port here, through these terminals into the battery. And then these battery terminals here will be pulling power out through this 5 volt boost IC and then out of our connection here. It. Oh, you're kidding me. I just noticed. Oh, wait. Wait, no, I have it backwards. So, um, pulling power out of this end. Inputting power onto this end. But uh, I also just noticed that these are um, mini USB, not micro USB. Hmm. So these are like not an Android connection. They're different, uh, which is annoying. I didn't realize that. Uh, it's fine. still works. But... Um, hmm. Irritating them nonetheless. Just uh, let me double check. Back. I uh, have to do some research there for a bit. But yes, anyway, um, let me cut some more cables. So yeah, we're soldering to the battery end because uh, I misspoke. Power will be coming in from the wall through this end, charging the 18650, and it will be pulling power from this end. So um, that's that backwards. Uh, let me just. Um, other thing I would advise getting is a wire snips because I remember back in the furniture labs, we all had to cut the wires with our teeth. And Ethan yelled at me. So, so don't do that. It's bad for your teeth. So. Did you say I yelled at you? I remember you saying don't do that, and I can't remember why. I'm just terrified for people's teeth. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Put that on our gravestone, everybody. All right. Simply terrified of teeth. Okay. Love the yellow, scared of teeth. Character traits. Or flaws. I'm not scared of teeth, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Let's take that okay, okay. Scared of far teeth. Yes, yes, there's there's a difference. Black cable. I'm just protecting a... everyone's teeth. You want to get a black cable and put it around the battery negative? That'll be the negative terminal of our battery charger. Again, grab your soldering iron. Now, be careful with this because I turn it down a little bit. You don't want it too hot when you're dealing with stuff like this because you might melt the contact solder. So you just want to make it zoop, not not as like low temperature as you could afford. So I have it down to 200 now. So... There we go. A little, a little spherical. It's spherical. Um, there's left tool. Cool. There we go. That's shiny. Uh, they should they should be flat on these on these contact IT, ICs. You can get your soldering to be like completely flat. Uh, you get that's what like you get marks your soldering. Just cut that off. You get marks your soldering in first year. Uh, for project and check plan, you get one and spherical solder points because uh, you can get them flat on these contact ICs. And Danny wants it. Well, again, it's no harm. Not when you're only doing hobby electronics. Uh, every now and again, just put your soldering iron just on the sponge just to get rid of all the schmutz, you know, burnt out flux and stuff like that. So, uh, red wire around the positive terminal. Um, again, just ease it up. And then bring your solder down. Once you can see that you have some solder on the contact, just pull away. That one was way better. This is cool. Let's go below. Do you see that da? There, see it's a little flatter. That's what you should be aiming for rather than these like spherical ones. And we'll just grab our pliers and pop it off. There we go. So I'll do another continuity test. So mic fell over. Back. Uh, uh, test. Whoa. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, yeah, never mind. These aren't connected. That is not how this IC works. Never mind. See, like, even if I just go here, it won't work here. Actually, I guess if it does yell, you've done something wrong then. So, uh, let's put the heat shrink on this. 
So yeah, like see the way I've solid this so it kind of lies flat. That's what you want. So that way you can cut these to be any length that you want. You can like just snip the end off of this if it's too long or solder two cables together if it's uh, not long enough. Um, I won't bother soldering this because uh, there's only two soldering points. I'll just keep this short. I'll do the heat shrink next. So if you're soldering, uh -oh. if you're soldering two bits of cable together, which is right now. So if um, you're using the cable that was given to you in the kit to make your if you found that like the connection that you put in your IC is too short or something, you can uh, extend them. So you just get one cable. I don't know why I didn't do, use cables of the same color, but uh, see when you're doing these kind of cable to cable solders, this is where the uh, the jewelers thing comes in handy. So I'm actually going to grab that. Cable from there. Oh, that's my IC. Put that down. All right. Now just try and like wrap one around the other. This is like relatively high gauge wire, so it's a little bit difficult. But... And I really made these tiny, didn't I? I think this is a little bit longer. Because I will be heat shrinking it so I can make it another one. I didn't use my teeth, shut up. All right. Um... No! Come on. I'm going to scream. See, this is where having the second clip on this clamp would be dead handy, so this doesn't keep falling off on me. But you just want to... I'll just do it the wrong way. So you just want to... Uh, what am I doing? So ideally, they should be connected before you put any solder on the cable. It's just it's easier that way. Just like that. Pull. There. That's a super janky way of soldering two cables together, I guess. But that's not even the thing I was meant to show you. So. This is done. So now we take our heat shrink tube. It. Ah. We feed it down one end of the wire. You can cut this to length as well. You don't have to keep it the length that it comes in. Um, well, the ones that I've given you, you have to cut the length to whatever length you need. So uh, this is actually a recommendation from Billy. Uh, to just use the back end of a soldering iron to use up. Rather than a match or a lighter or whatever, you just grab like that. Let's use a bit of iron, which is working i think if you have a lighter or a hairdryer use that because it's more consistent and it's not hot enough to melt the solder so if you're doing it this way just make sure you're careful you're not uh melting the solder on the inside oh yeah yeah it's definitely working yeah, this clamp easier to turn around. So you can kind of use the barrel of your solar and iron to melt it. Uh, you're not actually melting anything, it's just like shrinking under heat. You don't need to worry about the smoke off that as well. Yeah, that's one thing about soldering, it doesn't make you look cool. No matter what anybody says. I don't really any this is yeah, this is super dirty, but you can see here, like the heat shrink tube and kind of like melted around that now. So you can still kind of pull this, but if you melt, if you use, I use probably too thick of a piece, but you can get it in thinner gauges. So if you use like a thinner piece, it'll be like flush to it, but that just stops it now. So the connection on the inside isn't exposed. So now we can move this around, throw it around the place, and the connection on the inside will sever. Um, I think I'll leave it there. So that was just some rough soldering. Um, again, I'll be in the Discord to give you a hand. I'll be uploading this as soon as it's rendered. Um, for next week, we'll be doing our um, power bank. Uh, remind me to tell people in the email to go get one of these. Um, 
thing it's an old ps3 charger cable might make it a bit easier for some so um but yeah you're gonna want this soldered and you're gonna want this and you're gonna want this bit soldered um those are just the first bits we need soldered we'll probably be soldering a fair bit more in this because like the piezoelectric transducer that's in here and the battery case uh the cables in the end are a little bit weak the battery cap as well so like you might want to like solder higher gauge cables to the end because like i'm sure you know from doing electronics in first semester like the battery caps they give you the ends are like super weak so you have to like get them into the board and doesn't go in the hallway so like in second year i braided the end sock stores and stole uh the soldering iron and soldered like higher gauge cable to the end so that way you could just like plug it in and not worry about it because i knew it would work um but yeah uh that's the end of that anyway i'll be in the discord uh for any questions you can email us you can uh, contact our instagram page or or um come to one of the next sessions and we will uh be able to give you a hand there so our next maker space is next week we are doing the power bank like i was saying uh the other things we'll be doing are a piezoelectric microphone uh an am radio and a analog synthesizer so whether or not i haven't actually tried any of them um but i have the links to all the instructables and i'm making them available before the event so you can have a look at them um they're pretty generic um intro like hobby electronic stuff especially the am radio is class um so and the synth is cool as well um a lot of them are just kind of like proofs of like you know proof of uh theory i guess where it's like look at like this looks like a bag of electronics with nothing attaching them but by using this some knowledge some schematics and some solder it's a radio now which is crazy when you think about it you know like it's it's like literally a ziploc bag there's there's a, there's a radio a microphone a power bank and a synthesizer in here that's nuts so uh we'll let you know which ones are being done before they happen uh, get share in the Discord if you need a hand, and I'll see you later. Bye.